obviously I'm in view and you can hear me. Apologies for the noise, not great really I can do about it. Um, so here we are, January, not a great deal to do down on the plot. So I'm doing some more work on the shed today as well as a couple of bits and pieces on the plot. I'll be bringing you along with me. On the shed what I'm doing is I'm putting the framework up for the second skin of the roof. Uh, reason being for that is I'm not going to go into it too much but obviously as you know I've got my solar panels on the roof. So what the second skin is going to do is it's going to sort of sit flush with the solar panels so you're not really going to be able to get to the solar panels if you wanted to remove them without taking off an entire skin of roof which is going to be difficult because obviously all the fixtures and fittings are going to be under the roof felt. Um, it also extends the roof out which I always had intentions of doing at the front. So obviously we rain one off then, I can put the gutter in and away we go. Uh, so yeah that's that's the plan for the day today. It's just to put a bit of framework on. Um, the front I'll be leaving open because obviously I don't want to trap the water on the on the roof there. But I will be cutting the piece of wood ready to go on uh, for when I finish off the work. Uh, so I'm just gonna do the side, the back, cut the front. That's job number one for January really, it's like I said in my bike size, it's a case of battening down the apertures um, in case we get a storm like we had last sort of February, March time, so I'll crack on with that. Then I've got to go do, I'm going to wire and start stringing, stringing up the P-frame with some wire, um, get that ready, it's a bit early but I want it ready, I've got it built and ready, I'm going to talk you through that. Hopefully you can't hear the stereo, I've got to turn it off in a minute. Um, so it's that, there's the P-frame, we'll do a very quick clock tour. It's still a mess. Um, I can do a bit of a shed tour, that's getting a bit tidier now. Um, but obviously the garlic's up, the elephant garlic's up. Uh, I've got my, my, my spring cabbages are up and in. Um, I might even plant some of my broccoli plug plants, but I might stick them in the polyton. Don't know how advisable it is to do, but it's an experiment. I've got more plants than I need, so eh, why not experiment? Um, so I'm going to run you through. I'm going to go ahead and crack on with that. I'm probably going to switch cameras off to the time lapse, otherwise it's going to be a bit of a footage. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for today. I'll see you in a bit.
real quick one to show you what I'm doing with regards to the uh, the beam wiring, the beam climbing, you know, where the beans are going to go. Um, all I've got is a couple of you know, these, these things, things that you always bash your thumb when you're trying to put them in. A couple of these things, pegging the wire, I'll probably put another couple in here. And then obviously the wire runs all the way full length. Get it as taut as you can because you'll be surprised how heavy beam poles are. It's why I've ended up with this quite uh, heavy gauge wire really. This is more like what's going to hold. Um, but thread it through, put one in, fold it back on and try and get one over both and then I've just put a couple more in just because these staples really are a bit small for this wire. Um, but it's strong enough once the burden is shared over several wires and all I'll do is I'll come down about you know about hands width or four fingers width and put another one in. It's surprising quite how close they need to be. Uh, what I might do actually is I might put some uh, you know, I might come four fingers down, go on the other side, but this wood being three inches thick is a little bit too thick. So, I've got the time lapse on in case this is no good, in case it's too windy, um, I'll voice over it. But uh, that's all I'm doing, that's that's my bean, bean, uh, bean trough. Now, what I've done to build it is I've got some scaffold boards, so they're 12 inches deep and one foot across. Some 3x3 three three posts, like I said, you'd be surprised how heavy these things get. So it's not sealed at the bottom, but all I've done is I've put some plastic um, damp proof course just on the sides. It'll just help the wood last just a little bit longer. It is going to get tidied up. I am going to trim it off a little bit. Maybe put some battening on to, to clamp it in. Then obviously up the other side. Now I've come up a good six foot, maybe even more, and then a cross brace in. I haven't trimmed the top tops off the, I'll, I'll try and show you from this side otherwise you're going to be looking at the sunshine. I haven't trimmed the tops off the posts yet, not too sure if I'm going to, um, because what I'm actually thinking of doing is coming off the top of these posts and down and having a little sort of, not walkway but uh, a little sort of archway to maybe put more grapevines on, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but for now, I say I was quite surprised when I came this morning and it wasn't blown over. But all I've done is I've filled it about two inches with soil, then about three or four bags of alpaca manure, uh, and then I'll top it off with some probably some, some commoner garden or maybe even some spent compost uh, before the peas go in. But I'm just letting the frost and the, and, the, and the elements get to this manure that I've put down, help break it down a little bit. Um, in fact, tell me in the comments below. Maybe you, maybe you guys will, will solve uh, my sort of in-head dilemma. I can't decide whether, just for the sake of helping it to break down, whether to fold this plastic over the top and put some weights on the top, and it might help it break down a bit faster, encourage the uh, the worms and things to come up, and increase the warmth a little bit, or whether to let the frost get to it. Let me know in the comments below this video. Let me know what you think, please. Um, so I'm going to crack on. I'm going to get this wiring on. And I'll see you in a bit.
folks, hay shedders, hedgehead heads, whatever you wanna, I don't know what to call you guys yet. I don't think we're big enough really to have a name for a fan base. <laughs> I don't know, you guys can decide. Right, so, run out of wire, and I'm running out of light. I've got about 45 minutes left of sunlight left, so. The, uh, the P-frame is about, actually it's further along than I thought. It's about halfway there, so you can see or maybe not, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. There's the wire. It isn't as tight as I would like, but I'm not going to the extreme of putting turnbuckles on every string. Um, it's, it's difficult when there's just one of me to pull these, and I mean, this is this is two and a half mil gauge fencing wire. This is pretty strong stuff. So it's very difficult for me to pull it taut on my own. But, <laughs> I'm saying that, it's got about the same amount of give in every wire so in actual fact overall the spacing is still going to be relatively uh, equal ish um, the plot's still a mess I've not done as much tidying in fact I've not done any tidying as I would have as, as, as I, I wanted to get done uh, I've still got the polytunnel to tidy out I've still got a couple of trips left to do to the tip to get rid of the stuff that was in the shed um, I'm going to take you in the shed shortly in fact now I'm going to take you in the shed I'm going to show you around some of the stuff that I've done um, I'm getting asked a lot about the inside of the shed so let me uh, get in here give the camera a chance to adjust I'll turn the lights on not that that will make a great deal of difference to you guys but excuse me a touch of the old consumption. No, I haven't. Yeah, about indigestion. So, changes that have happened in the shed. I'll uh, I'll turn you around. So, what we got? What we got? Make sure we zoomed out. Problem is getting it all in in frame. It's difficult. So, obviously, we've got the doorway. We've still got a roof, which is always a good thing. So you can see up here the. Um, or maybe not now. The cables for the solar power come in. They go behind the wall. They still need a bit of tidying. But I've just pulled them all a bit tight, so I might need to take the panel back off or extend these cables a little bit. I don't like them being tight like that. It doesn't do them any good. Um, so yeah, I might need to make some new, some new cables and just bring them down from here, and I'll just I'll just make some new ones. Five minute job. I'm not doing it today. Um, but as you can see, I mean, we're, what, about four or four, what time are we on? Quarter past two on a winter's afternoon, and I'm still generating a charge of one point, uh, we'll call it one and a half amps. I've had my radio on all day, I've got my lights on at the moment. So coming across, you've got the solar power, the solar power goes down, I've got the two batteries still under here, the the inverter, uh, and instead of fanning about with plugs on the inverter, I've got a, an extension cable here to just plug things in and out of. I've got an extra bit of light if I need it, though this light tends to drain the batteries very, very quickly, and I don't know if you can see it, but it strobes like mad. So we're not going to use that just now. It's more sort of summer's evening when I come down here on a summer's evening. Um, yeah, so, I've got this down for a reason, uh, not for what's in it, but I've got these bread bins, or shopping bins, or whatever you want to call them, and they go up on this shelf up here, which is pretty bloody solid, I could probably sleep up there, not that I'm going to try, but I probably could. Um, so I've got a box shelf, then we've got a rail full of miscellaneous stuff, all this is going to be cleaned, I'm going to do that before I go home. Uh, quick word on cleaning your tools. I can't find my tool file, so I shan't be sharpening today. If I just try, over. yeah, we'll stay over here. So all my Wolfgarten tools, as you can see, contrary to popular belief, they do get used. Um, my frying pan for my lunches. A couple of sort of spare screwdriver bits. I've got an adjustable screwdriver that I keep down here as well. It's just always handy. A little extra shelf, sort of washing up stuff. So sort of, yeah, so these bread bins, they, they go up there, they fit quite nicely. Round to the stove. 
new kettle. It's bigger, more cuppers. It's nice. Which is just powered by a whatever size bottle of gas that one is. I've got some of my scaffold poles. Um, that's the, that's for the upcoming next project, which is a DIY polytunnel using scaffold poles, recycled wood. The only thing I'm hoping that I'm going to have to buy for that is going to be the uh, the plastic. So that's that's the hope for that. And round to the other side, haven't double skinned this, and I don't know if I'm going to bother. Um, but I needed to get the tools hung up and out of the way because they were just. I wasn't making any progress in making this shed tidier with having them all dumped in corners. We've got all sorts of offcuts of wood down there, and that's for if I decide to sort of put stuff across here. Um, as you see, the back wall's double skinned, this is double skinned. It's not double skinned back there, but it doesn't really matter. The only reason I put this skin on was really to cover up the wiring um, to make it safe or safer. Um, it may yet get cut off down here, which is where the rib is, uh, and a board put on because I'm going to put a fuse, a car fuse box in there when I start wiring up things like water pumps for the irrigation system, which hopefully I'll be starting sort of the end of March, March sort of April time. Only really needs to be in for January. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have water fed from the rainwater coming off the shed and the greenhouse, or well the greenhouse is actually going, but coming off the shed and the chicken coop, that's all gonna collect into an IBC. In the IBC, or in line with the IBC, I'm gonna have a tap and that's gonna come in, that's actually gonna come in here, somewhere around here, it might actually just come in here. Um, but on there will be a pump, which will come up to the tap, but off the tap I'm hoping to put a splitter on it and underneath here, We'll have some cables, uh, some piping that'll go out and into the polytunnel and hopefully water everything in the polytunnel. Like I said, we'll wait and see what happens. We'll wait and see what happens. Um, chickens, they're doing well. I'm just I'm gonna do the quick plot tour as well while I'm here. The um, cherry tree, I don't know if that's gonna survive. That was sort of rescued from another site. Um, that it, it, it was, I mean, it, it's, it's had canker, it's had massive splits in it, it's, it's, it's not particularly healthy. I've given it quite a savage pruning. Um, it is still budding, as you can see, sort of here, it is still budding. So hopefully I haven't killed it. If I have, I've got some cherry wood for some smoking of some meats, nam nam, next year. So chickens are nice and happy, their run is nice and dry again. It's got a new roof on it. Uh, the coop needs mucking out, so excuse me, but uh, the coop is, is great. We've seemed to have, um, for the, at least, touch wood, at least for the meantime, we seem to have defeated the rodent problem and I'm actually getting eggs again. So happy days there. Uh, once, like I said, I'm trying to keep this as short as I can. Uh, where are we? So, once again, I don't think you can really see through these guys. There's a few overwintering collies in there that we're only put in really to see what they do. Um, my elephant garlic's up. Where is it? Is that it? Or is that the weed? I think that's, yeah, that's some. Let's see. That's all up and happy as it is in this bed over here as well. It's a bit easier to sort of show you a bit in this bed. Uh, strawberry bed, or secondary strawberry bed, quite happy, as well as some garlic coming up in the back of there. Primary strawberry bed, you saw I was weeding it the other day. The uh, bed for the broccoli, is it broccoli that we decided we were putting in here? No, broad beans are going in here. That's all nice and happy. This is next job, uh, and I might, I don't know if we've got enough sunlight left, I might start this today. Now this is my first attempt, first failed attempt, at a caned sort of fruit area. It's all wrong, I realise, and, and I know that now, it is all completely wrong. Um, two of the four canes that I put in here have died anyway. So they're coming out. Um, it, it may be a job for next weekend, I'm not too sure. 
um, but they're coming out the reason I'm saying I'm not sure if I'm going to start it today is I, I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to put them. I might call that a day uh, coming up on Wednesday's bite size uh, we're going to plant some spring cabbage uh, I've got a variety called Greyhound which apparently is quite happy to plant now so we're going to have an experiment with that we're going to talk more in depth uh, about cleaning and sharpening tools hopefully if I can find my tool file I'll demonstrate that for you if not we might just have to talk about the theory I know that's not not the best way to do things but unfortunately it's uh, it might be the way that I have to do it this time and then at the end of next season we'll demonstrate it properly because I want to sh end of next season also I'll have to be replacing parts on my secateurs and things like that so we shall be demonstrating why you don't buy cheap secateurs uh, and why I love my Felco Model 2's not a sponsor but um, yeah I think to be honest folks I think I'm going to call it a day I hope that 2020 so far is treating you well I know we're only a few days into it but I hope it's treating you well and uh, until next time folks I'll see you later.